I recently visited Denmark, an island named Rumi to be exact. It was a really nice time. Just look at this epic sunset. On the way there I was a bit unaware of something. But the next day I immediately noticed this. Denmark is having elections really soon. And anybody that knows me already knew what would happen next. Yeah, I wanted to know what every political party looks like. And today I'm explaining them to you. But before we start we should talk about election system. We need to understand the battlefield first and then talk about the actors. The Danish parliament is named Folketing. It has 179 seats. Four of them go to Greenland and the Faroe Islands. Those two are basically semi-independent countries, but are part of the Danish realm. They would be too weak on their own. Both of them have their own party systems, and people are able to vote for candidates. The two most popular are elected to parliament. But I will not talk about them, as they are only running in those two areas. They can't be voted for in the main country, and will only be important in very close elections. But I still wanted to mention them. This leaves 175 Danish seats. 135 of them are split into electorates. There are 10 of them. In addition, there are 40 compensation seats. To be eligible for them, a party needs 2% of the popular vote. Not all electorates have the same number of politicians, and it's based on population. A bit like my own community elections. You might be asking why there are compensation seats. Let me explain using this website. This is Staatsrechtonike, and you can find it and other sources in the description. Yeah, this overview is a bit confusing, but don't worry, we only need two numbers. In sign, you can see party six. This is our example, and they will have insane bad luck. It's really sad. And in red you have the number of seats. The electorates use a proportional election system. In this case there aren't. So we have to look at the third row. Let's say this is Southern Newtland. And the party gets 3%. This is above the 2% threshold. So they should get seats. But there are only 17 seats. And I calculated it. The party would deserve exactly 0.51 seats. But we can't really give them half a politician. And there are different solutions to this problem. The Danish system prefers bigger parties. So our party that might deserve 5.7 seats gets 6. But because of that, our party gets none. Okay, that was maybe a bit annoying. Let's see another electorate. Here we have Copenhagen. 20 politicians are sent from here. And the party gets 2%. And they are above the threshold. But you can already see the problem. Once again, they get nothing. At 20 people, 2% just isn't enough. Even if the party should get something. Meanwhile, it's wound up for others. This is North Zealand. And they have to get something here. I mean, they even have 6%. But we all have got a point by now. Because the electorate only has 10 seats. And it's still not enough. You can also see that the Dohan system is a bit more complicated. It's not just rounding, but we have the same problem. But here party actually gets one person more than they should have. But why did I show this to you? I have seen people calling the system too complicated. But without compensation, a party might cross the threshold everywhere. And still get nothing. Of course, this is an extreme case. But a party might lose half the parliamentarians they deserve. So it's important to have the seats. I have even had arguments on this. And it's hard to explain without example. And I need to explain this to you. We now know the election system. But how does it look for voters? I sadly haven't found a belt for 2022. But it should be close to 2019 one. Here you can see it. You have to take a party or a candidate. Important or. I thought you need both party and candidate. Or at least a party. But the ally really means or. So just one take or it will be invalid. Below that you can see the parties and the candidates. This should be an open disproportional representation system. That's what I was thinking of first. And both the bad and Wikipedia seem to agree with me. So the parties don't decide a single candidate for you. In contrast, countries like Germany have a closed list. But the German system is also mixed. So maybe not the best example. You might have noticed the letter next to the party names. Every party has one as the election symbol. It's an A for the Social Democrats. The Left Lips have a B, and the Conservatives a C. 
And it's finally time to talk about the parties. They're traditionally organized into blocks. You will never guess which one we'll talk about first. It's the blue one. Okay, I'm just joking. We will start with the red one. This is a poster of the biggest party. These are the social democrats. They unsurprisingly are center left. Their ideology already is in the name. They are the obvious leader of the red block. The biggest party in the block and often the biggest in any election. Because of that, they often need the government. I should also mention something. In Denmark, there isn't really a clear difference between government and opposition. The parties left to the Social Democrats often won't enter a coalition, as they want more left-wing policies. So they will vote for the government, but are not part of the coalition. This arrangement is called confidence and supply. The Social Democrats have been a minority government until recently. No other party of the Red Bloc wanted to be in the coalition. In Europe, the Social Democrats work with many other parties. But something about them is different. This is their leader, Mette Frederiksen. And she is more anti-immigration. And has worked with right-wing populists to bring back border controls. As you are able to see, we have regular posters. The photo of a candidate and their name. Then there also is the party logo. Many center-left parties use the rose. Then there's also the party name and symbol. As I've already told you, it is an A. You might be asking yourself why it's not an S. This is due to the German minority party, which is guaranteed the letter. There are also the posters with just the election symbol. Yeah, the quality isn't great. I had to take the picture from inside of a car. I'm pretty sure the party wants to show their presence. The social democrats were everywhere, even on the island. Many posters can show you an option. Here you can see the latest polls. They hover between 25 and 30 percent. More closer to 25. Last time they had a bit less than 26 percent. And they will get a similar result. They are traditionally weak at megaphone. They will be the biggest party by far as others have lost. The next party is a bit hard to describe. It is the green left. But this doesn't fully really describe the party. As they were known as Socialist People's Party until recently. And it's still cultured in Danish. To understand them, I will explain you how they were founded. In 1956, they were reforms in Hungary. They were part of the Eastern Bloc. And to fight the reforms, the Soviet Union invaded. This led to violence and deaths. The Danish Communist Party supported them. But there were some in the party that really didn't like that. And saw it as injustice. Some of them even were leaders. They lost their positions or were expelled. Those people are supposed to be aware of the communists, but thought the social democrats were too moderate, and saw a new party need to be founded. That would be in between. They wanted to combine socialism and democracy. In their first try, the party already gained 6%, and since then they are rarely lower than 5 The party has some history. They ironically had some left-wing splits as well. We will talk about them soon. Internationally, they work with the Greens, and surprisingly, not with the leftists. But in the last few decades, they have also talked about green topics. They aren't showing the election symbol here. It's an F. You are able to see the candidates and their names. But the posters are white and not in the party colors. They might do this to not be confused with the social democrats. As for for using red. Here we can see their party logo. That's partially in green as well. Further, they also use text. This might be targeted to families. It says something like more time for our children, and might allude to working culture. They are between 7 and 10 percent in polling, far smaller than the Social Democrats. While they are working together, they have only been in a coalition once, in 2011. That went so bad that they lost half of their voters. Outside of that, they only have indirect support. But they have also voted against budgets. So far, we had the Social Democrats and Socialists. So you might be asking who this is. This is Enid's Listen. Unity List in English. It's actually a Unity List, not a plural. Yeah, I know, but it has an N in Danish. And I enjoy saying it like that. Let me guess you don't want to change your opinion, right? No. The Unity List is also built on socialism and democracy. But I am a radical. And the most left-leaning party in this election. The party was created in the early 90s and a union of two or three groups. One of them was the Danish Communist Party. 
which had been financed by the Soviet Union in the past. But he was aware of socialists. That had split from the Socialist People's Party, as well as two or three other small groups, so it's a bit hard to point exactly where they are. Their rhetoric is a bit random as well. At the beginning of the 2000s they had Marxism in the program, and today they are calling for a revolution, but want to do that by running a democratic election. As you can see it's a bit complicated, and everything they say can be interpreted differently. As they of course are Marxists that are against the Soviet Union, and by that logic they should oppose some parts of the party. On the other hand, many revolutions haven't ended that good. Because of that, some see the party as radical and others as extreme. The party doesn't really like to work with others. And even if there are compromises, they just back out. So are really hard to identify mix. Internationally, they work with other leftist parties. But let's get to important stuff. What is this letter? This is the Danish Ö. This letter also exists in some other languages, such as German. And after I learned that, I'm feeling a bit stupid. I didn't find this in Rümö, but in Skabek, a city on the mainland. These left-wing parties were a bit hard to find. Their poster was surprisingly at the harbor of Rümö. Based on that point, here we have a statistic. Both socialist parties have a big stronghold. And it's Copenhagen. Outside of that, they have Farika. And it's listed in the Socialist People's Party have even more similarities. Both of them used to be against the EU, but have moderated since. And it's listed not that much, but it's similar. Their rhetoric is more moderate as well. Once again, we have a classic campaign poster. The candidate with the name and the slogan. And it's listed is also known as Red Green Alliance and talks about green topics. Here they call themselves the vote for climate and welfare. The left-wing parties had been level for some time. Both were at almost 10%, but they have stopped us since then. Last time they got 7%, so it could end in both directions. A party building on green politics is the alternative. They are a newer party, and performed in 2015. In the beginning, they saw themselves as neither left or right, but they now work with the left-wing Team 25 movement. Normally, they are seen as part of the Red Bloc, but this time the votes weren't necessary, so they went into opposition and formed the so-called Green Bloc. Since the last election, much has happened for them. A new party leader was elected, and there were many scandals around her. Because of that, many left the party, more than half of their members in parliament, and founded the Free Greens, the party leader resigned in 2020, and some of the members returned, but the rest of the Free Greens didn't want to merge, and due to that we have today's situation. However, another party joined them. The Vegans party renamed themselves Green Alliance and joined them, and this has led to today. I think there was an alternative fan on the island, as these posters were everywhere. They are saying this is the alternative as well, and this is really important. As the party was below the 2% threshold for a long time, you are also able to see the election symbol. Another Danish letter. This is the O. I also found this in Skabek. The world is my neighborhood. And there are traditional posters. I don't think I have to explain again. Yeah, the alternative has many different strategies. There were even more. Using nature and grass photos. But I sadly didn't picture them. I have already alluded to it. It's not really safe for them. But now they at least are above the threshold in some polls. Last time it was the 3%. And I think they will be able to get into parliament again. I never thought something like this would happen. But I looked for a B for multiple days. As this is Radical Venster. I think something went wrong with their campaign. I didn't find them in Rumi or Skabek. But I found for smaller parties. So if you are a member of the party, what went wrong there? At the end, I even had to go to Tinder, and could have never been happier. We will talk about the name later. It is a social liberal party, and center to center left. The party is pro-European Union. Prior to the 2000s, they had worked with the right. But since then, they are more part of the Red Bloc. But they also happen to be the reason for this election, as they have revoked their confidence for the Social Democrats, due to a coronavirus variant in Mings and humans. 
Mings are animals. I know, it's a bit weird. We also have the logo in purple. And another candidate. The election letter is the B. The left liberals are always hovering. In one election 3% and almost 10 in the next one. That's ironically a stable trend for them. At the moment they are down. Between 3 to 5%. Yeah guys, it's finally time to talk about the blue block. They are more conservative and in opposition. There are 14 parties by the way. And I'm working on this video since 5 days ago. This might actually go up after the election. Of course I have to choose the best elections all the time. The biggest party in the blue block is Venstra. We have had the left liberals and now the right liberals. And it's time to talk about their names. As Venstra is translated to the left. That's a bit of a weird name for a liberal party. To understand their name we have to go back in time. In the beginning there were only Venstra and the conservatives. The conservatives were called Heurer, which means the right. And because of that, the liberals were called left. Radikale Venstre was even more left wing. And is called Radical Left in English. Most of the time, Venstre is the biggest party of the blue block. Not always, but very often. They are also leading at this point in time. In Europe, they are working with other liberals. But one could also see them as a farmer's party. In every Nordic country, there is a party like this. But normally they are called central parties. But in Denmark it has liberal branding. The party has so many posters everywhere. And on this one their logo even is reflective. So a bit like a safety vest. Just on a poster. And I've never seen something like that before. At the moment the party is getting around 10 to 14%. And that would be really bad for them. As they got 24% last time. We will talk about parties that have won later. Then you will be able to understand a bit of what happened. I've just mentioned them. And I want to introduce you to the conservatives. They have always been conservatives. But the modern party was created by Helga and some Venstre members. Today the party is seen as more center-right. And they also like to work with Venstre. And they don't like right-wing populists as much. They have actually led the government. Including the social liberals as well. The party had a bit of a rise and fall. Their leader soon in Papa Pausen, and has even been more popular than Venstre. Interestingly, he is a gay politician, and the relationship with his husband is part of the reason for the fall, as they are currently divorcing. Pausen claims his husband is lied about his background, and the scandals really hurt the party. There are also very many posters of them. As you can already see, their election symbol is a C, but they don't show their party name, the Conservative People's Party. That was really dumb. Interestingly, they were the only ones having these mount posters. Besides their conservatism, the party cares about green topics. And is therefore described as green conservative. Like I said, the party isn't looking that strong. At this point getting 68%. Just a few months ago, they got more than 15. But in the last few years, they weren't that strong anyway. So it's not that bad. 7% at the last election. And it's part of the worst result. This is a mixer, and you might be asking why it is here. This mixer mixes right wing populists. And let's start with our first mix. One of the ingredients is the right wing populist party. We will need the anti immigration policies. And the second ingredient is the social democratic party. Now we have to wait for a bit and get the Danish People's Party. I think you can understand what this party is about, as the party is supporting the welfare state. And this mix has made them popular. They have even won an election. The 2015 EU elections. They got almost 30%. But since then it has all gone downhill. One problem is that the social democrats are anti-immigration as well. Further people disapproved of the working government. There are other right-wing populists. And their leaders are popular. As you can see the party is mentioning personal votes. And there's a link. Which brings you to the website of the candidate. They are not showing the election symbol. It's an offer for them. The party also has international allies. They are working with the German AfD and Marine Le Pen. As you can see, they are doing terrible. In some polls, the party has lost more than 90% of their voters. I mean, they are partially below the threshold. It's really sad. But I think they will survive and stay in parliament. And maybe get a bit more than 3%. It's time again for a mixer. The populists are staying. But this time we are adding liberals. Let's wait a bit. 
and we might get something new. And yeah, that's the case. The new bourgeoisie. Okay, the name is a bit hard to translate. Some call this party the new right, and I think they can be translated as new citizens party, but having a more middle or upper class meaning. Here we have some campaign posters. The election symbol is obviously a D. And this is not just a random candidate. S. Panel Vermont is the party leader. And is running in the electorate. They were also the only right wingers with posters on Römer. The party was founded in 2015. It was founded by former conservatives and became an alternative to the Danish People's Party. Both parties are critical of Islam. The party self describes as non ideological, but builds on conservative values. Hmm. But they are very different on economics. There they are far more liberal. And more like another party we will talk about later. Yeah, this is getting a bit cluttered. The new right slowly gained traction. Last time they only got 2.4%. Then they went up in the polls. And were close to 10%. But the Danish People's Party kept some of their voters. Then the new right fell again. And you can probably already guess the reason why. You're joking. Not another one? Yeah, even more right wing populists. Is this Denmark or Italy? You might be asking why this party even exists. You might be able to see another name on the poster. This is Inga Stelberg. She had been a member of Fenstre, but was kicked out of the party because of her handling of refugees. Apparently, she separated the couples if one person was a minor and if both people were younger than 18. I think they wanted to protect children, but this went so far that she broke the law and I think would even separate 17 and 18 year olds. Because of that she even lost a vote of no confidence. She lost her seat and had to go to prison for two months. Here we have another poster. Just with the party name here. That should be inspired by the Sweden Democrats. The party is just a few months old. But they had an amazing start. They got 10%. A polling record for a new party. But they are already losing momentum. As you are able to see, they have a Danish letter as well. This is the Danish L. So far, it's a bit hard to point out exactly where the party is. But I want to bring more law and order, give the police my money, and support decentralization. Some of the Danish People's Party have joined them, and so they already have seats in the Folketing. I'm really looking forward to the next party, as they are using my favorite color. Are you kidding me? The Liberal Alliance is normally using cyan, but they are using other colors on their election posters and their party logo instead of their election symbol. In the elections they are using an I. The Liberal Alliance is even more liberal than the Liberals. Such a confusing sentence. They are also described as libertarian and even more against taxes and want to abolish many regulations. They support nuclear energy. Unlike everyone else. They are open on social issues. They want open borders and are supporting gay marriage. They once looked pretty bad in the polls. Last year they even fell below 2%. But as you can see they are really gaining at the moment. Sometimes as high as 8%. This would mean their best ever result. Last time they got a bit more than 2%. I think the Christian Democrats are also part of the blue block. But they have less than 1%. So we will ignore them. These were the two Danish blocks. But there is also another party. They aren't part of any block. However, this party isn't really independent. Let me explain. We are speaking of the moderates. And this poster was everywhere. The party, however, was created by a random person. That is Lars Lekker Rasmussen. The former leader and prime minister of Venstre. For a long time it had been below 2%. But in the last few weeks they had an insane surge. But for a formerly small party, many advertisements. There are posters everywhere. I guess they have finances. Here you are able to see the last polls. And as you can see the moderates are doing really well. They are close to being second. And are the purple M. And we are finally done now. But I still want to show you some possible coalitions. That could be created after the election. One could be the red bloc. But they would need a majority. And the support of the social liberals. I originally planned this video to come out before the election. But we now know that this coalition is possible. 
There also was another possibility. Rasmussen working with the Blue Block. He was seen as Kingmaker. And of course, a former Venstrem member. But we are going to skip this, as that's impossible anyway. The third option is the centrist government, the Social Democrats working with Rasmussen. Both sides seem to be interested, and this could involve the centrist parties. But negotiations might be harder, as there is a left wing majority. And I'm glad you finally said this, we are done. Wait a minute. I think you forgot someone. What's the problem this time? Because of that, many left the party. More than half of them are members in parliament. And founded the Free Greens. Okay, we also have the Free Greens. But they are so irrelevant, they get less than half a percent. They are so small that even I have more TikTok likes. Yeah, that's my actual reasoning. These were Danish elections. And the video took such a long time. I really hope you now have an overview. Of course, there's not everything to know about the elections. This is just the beginning. And you should do your own research. What you can see here is only the German version. And this thing took me 6 days to create. So a like and subscription would really help. And you should share this with your friends. This might be my biggest project ever. Almost 50 minutes of content. I don't know how often I will upload in the future. But I will try to cover more elections. Especially in the US. In the description you can find my Discord server. And you are free to join. But as that's everything for today, I'm going to say bye.